impact of uh, bycatch, whether it's on steelhead or, or in that case, hooligans. Um, so what do you think of that in terms of, SEMA can only do so many topics and it sounds like that might be one that would be valuable from the perspective of the club. Just my understanding of the issue with regards to First Nations and discussions, I mean, we, I have Aboriginal fishery strategy joint, joint technical meetings every year, and there are really good projects running in Rivers Inlet and in Bella Coola here that the First Nations are running, and they have been running for the last 10 years. And uh, we always have the troll managers online to talk about or what's going on with regards to shrimp troll. And the Queen Charlotte Sound's been closed since 2000, just before 2002, 2001. Before I moved here, and we just haven't seen the recovery. So again, for bycatch issue in this area, there's no fishery. So not to say that it might have been one of the contributing factors originally, but currently there's been no fishery, and there isn't going to be a fishery until we actually see the oil in return, and we know that hasn't happened yet. It's not to say that we should be planning forward if they do return. Absolutely, because Queen Charlotte Sound isn't open, and we're not looking to open it. Uh, but I, I'm just wondering, uh, to spend the time on a working group on something that we are working directly with the First Nations on and discussing with them at that level, I just, until there's a larger concern or something we can do, I mean, the area is closed, so unless somebody can think of something that would be specific to address with regards to that, I think the department and the First Nations are trying to do their best. Team Science and Technical Committee on the Rivers Inlet Recovery Team, they were the drivers um, they had great debates about restoration, the level, uh, the means, um, and they pulled the uh, uh, available biological information. And I think you probably need something like that because they didn't necessarily have a vested interest. That's right. Yeah. They had some bias. It's almost a recovery team aspect. Need something like what? Sorry. It's just um, what Russ is alluding to is that we don't see in here like science mm -hmm. anywhere. Like, so I don't know where that comes in. I don't know where that fits, fits in. Yeah. You know, okay. like a scientific Not just technical. pure science, but we had advice on technical, mm -hmm. our uh, traditional well, environmental yeah. knowledge right. was part of that scientific uh, endeavor. Okay. Um, and how would you suggest bringing science and traditional environmental knowledge into this process? Well, we invited known specialists to participate at Rivers Inlet and Smith Inlet. And um, once they realized that they're, they're being listened to, then, then they did become somewhat enthusiastic to give us ideas towards a solution. Because right now, what's happened out here, if you want to see with the hooligans, well, bycatch was 90 tons that one year. We were 100 tons short in the river. But our science branch uh, has never come out and said that there's a direct correlation. And of course, once the hooligans were gone, the, sh the shrimp trawl fishery says, oh, we're not catching them anymore. Yeah, because there are none. So um, we need some cohesiveness there. Kind of know what happened, but unfortunately, and also, Fisheries and Ocean Canada, I, I work for them and I know, and we all know that we work for them, they're underfunded. Their mandate a lot of times can't be met, so we take shortcuts. And those shortcuts damage the resource. I hope that papers. I'm only, I'm only 12 months from retirement. So, what, guys, the planning office? you want to just respond to this question of how to bring science and uh, traditional ecological knowledge into it? Well, the first thing I would say is that, again, that's one of the themes that we've been hearing about some other communities. And so I think, in part, it's an open question of how do we effectively bring science and traditional knowledge or local knowledge into this process. And, and there's been a few suggestions around that, uh, including ensuring that they are part of discussions on working groups so that you're informed by that. Or uh, the idea of having workshops where specialists and, and people who hold that knowledge are sharing it with 
the broader public to encourage a discussion. More broadly, where does science fit into this? Um, one of the other documents that is available here is something called the Planning Process Overview. And this is where we sort of, in general terms, speak to the real importance of ensuring that um, decisions are, and recommendations are being informed by science. At this point, um, we haven't settled on the form that science advice would take. So is it an advisory committee of scientists, or are we calling on groups of scientists um, at different points in the process to provide us with different kinds of information that we need at that point. Uh, but what we do know is that there needs to be a, a really prominent role for that in the process. Our plan at this point is that when we convene an advisory committee, a discussion about what science input looks like and, and how that happens is one of the early topics of discussion to have with an advisory committee so that people have an opportunity to provide input to, to that discussion. I think one way that that might be work or be done, I'll use a, a parallel situation. When our enrollment in our schools dropped by 30% in two years, as a member of the Board of Trustees of the school district, we had to do some, make some significant changes. But what we did is we had our experts develop a number of options for us. This is what I would see the scientists doing. And then go to the community, we went to the community and said, these are the options. Which ones would you prefer? And uh, we got consensus that they, would, they preferred us to do what we did. And that's why in this district, this year, we're not in the same boat as Vancouver School District or Prince George. Um, but we did get input from experts and guidance from the, the community. And this is how the input from science might work on specific problems, come up with a suite of possible solutions and see which one is the most acceptable. Mm. We're doing the same thing with the water, the water district. We had the science input, we developed the opportunities from that, and then we presented those opportunities to the community. And so, following the community direction. For example, you, if you recall from Neil's presentation, it's anticipated that next year though, the casino process will develop uh, objectives, and, and then what will follow from that is strategies to achieve the objectives. So, you might seek uh, options from science and traditional uh, knowledge on what what the strategies might be to achieve those objectives, and then review those as opposed to uh, as a way to do what you were just describing. Yeah, but, but we're talking about pure science. The science should be swayed by economics or protection. And both of those influences can have a number of drastic um, objectives. They're quite different. And it doesn't really give us uh, a range of options to choose from. And it's pure sense. Mm. We so understand the, the economics. We're suffering from it, or the lack thereof. So we understand it. What we need to understand is the pure science. So that we as a community can make recommendations based upon both. So let's shift to a different question. Um, there's the prospect of 